Today I'm gonna to teach you guys how you can create this crazy warp through distortion transition. My name is Evan Wynn, welcome to 11% Tutorials. This crazy optics compensation warp effect is just a really great effect to use on your music videos and other projects. It's really simple to recreate. Today, all you'll be needing is After Effects, no plugins required. But before we get started, if you guys are new to this channel, please make sure to like this video and subscribe. It's free, all this content is free, so it'd really mean a lot if you guys could. But without further ado, let's jump right into the tutorial. All right guys, so now that we are finally inside of After Effects, the first thing that you wanna do is load in your clip, obviously. So I just have a clip here I shot of my friends, just all on iPhone. Like really, you really don't need super high quality clips, you know, just something that works. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to click on this layer and we're going to hit Command D to duplicate it. Then what we're gonna do is we are going to turn off the visibility of this bottom layer for now. So you'll still see your clip, nothing's gonna change. Um, if you turn off the visibility on the top, then you'll see we just have a black screen. What we're gonna do right here on the top layer is we are are going to rotoscope. Now, for those of you who don't know to rotoscope, we're just gonna go over it quickly. We actually do have another short tutorial, so you can click on this link right here if you wanna check that out, but I'll just go over it real quickly right here. What you're gonna do is we're going to double click this top layer right here, and now you'll see it opens a new composition tab, and it's gonna be called layer, and whatever your file name is. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this roto brush tool icon right here, and you're going to drag and just select and color over your subjects. Now you'll see I'll make a pink line uh, selection of your subject and you know if it's not selected all of your subjects like right here I have my other friend that I still want selected but I didn't even select any of him and then right here you can scroll to zoom in by the way right here on uh, the shoulders are still missing then you can just simply drag and color over it. Now you're gonna do this for the very first frame. So I'm just gonna color over both of my subjects until the pink line outlines all of them. Now, once they're pretty much all selected and you can see we have a nice pink outline selection, but there's actually still some in the middle that we don't want selected. We can hold option or alt if you're on PC and the, the brush will turn red and that way you can just easily deselect some of the areas. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. Now, if you're using one of the newer version of After Effects and you see you have Rotobrush 2.0, but if you're on an older version, you have 1.0, 1.0 might be a bit slower, but 2.0 nowadays is really good. So I really recommend getting that upgrade. Um, you can just you know simply select and it pretty much does a really great job of selecting everything. And by the way, if you want your brush to be bigger or smaller, you can hold command and just scroll, click and scroll, click and scroll, and it will just increase or decrease the size of the roto brush tool. And with that right now, we're we're pretty much good right here. I've selected a pretty great deal. Now what you're gonna do, this is probably one of the most important parts of this, is you're simply going to drag and just scroll along your timeline. You'll see that it adjusts. There's a little green bar right here in the top corner and it will show you the green bar progressing. And as it progresses, so does the roto brush. The roto brush pink outline will adjust as your scene continues on. If there's any areas that you still want selected, like right over here, you can see that in between the pant leg, um, um, it started selecting that. I, I kind of don't want that selected. So I can simply just hold op or option or alt to deselect and, and then I can just deselect that middle of that pound leg and boom, there we have a nice accurate rotoscope. Continue to drag along and just watch for adjustments. This is a timely process, so I will speed this up. And boom, once you have entirely selected all your rotoscope scenes, what you're gonna do is you're going to hit this freeze icon right here and you will see it'll bring up a bar and it will just freeze and lock in place every single rotoscope scene. This is very helpful for say in case if you are editing and then you accidentally do something and you just lose all of your rotoscoping work. And boom, once it is done, you will see you have an entirely nicely selected rotoscope area outlined by the pink lines. One thing I do wanna note on, just in case if um, you do have this error, I just wanted to highlight this real quick. If you do get this error right here, it says frame rate mismatch, uh, footage fields found, and then there's a composition frame frame mismatch. What this is basically saying is that your footage right here is at a different frame rate than your composition settings. To fix this, you can simply come over here to composition and then composition settings, and then you can change your frame rate to exactly the frame rate it's asking. So right here it's asking 29.984, and that sounds really tedious, but 
Uh, computers are computers, and if you don't have exact numbers, it really messes some stuff up. So just change the frame rate to exactly what it's asking, hit OK, and boom, that error is gone. Now that you've finally selected all of your rotoscoping, you can go back to your main composition now. You can you can go ahead and click off of the Rotobrush tool, back to the normal mouse, and you'll see if we scroll throughout, boom, a nice selected rotoscope scene. Now this clip really worked out great right here for me, but for say if you have another clip and if there's a lot of clipping for say, if I go over here, you can see around the edge of his hair, there is some little white lines. You can basically adjust these roto brush settings by hitting the shift edge. If you scroll up and down on the shift edge, it will increase or decrease the amount of fringing and you know just edge accessory that you have on your footage. Once you have adjusted that and you've gotten all your rotoscoping down, we're now ready to move on to the meat of the effect. For this effect, we're gonna first start off by turning back on the visibility for your bottom layer clip. And now here comes the effects. We're gonna go over here to our effects and presets bin, and we are going to first search up optics compensation. It'll come up right away because this is an After Effects plugin. I applied that optics compensation to our bottom layer clip. What we're first gonna do is we're gonna hit the keyframe option on the field of view, and then we're going to click reverse lens distortion. Now make sure your keyframe, your playhead is at the very beginning of the clip when you did this, because what we're gonna do is we're going to move about you know, a, a second or two in, it really doesn't matter up to your video preference. And what we're gonna do is we're basically just going to increase that value just like a crap ton until you get this crazy warping on our effect. You can see like there's a lot of zoom. It looks like we're zooming into our subjects, but our subjects are staying the same. Why? Because they're rotoscope. What we're gonna do now, you're gonna wanna pay very close attention to, we're going to hit the graph editor. And this is where a lot of the fluidity and naturalness of the effect comes in. If you've never opened up the graph editor before, don't get freaked out when you see this. It's basically a graph explaining the increase of amount of effects that you've used. What we're going to do is we're going to grab this yellow anchor head right here and we're going to drag it all the way down, okay? We're going to drag it down and then we're going to drag it in. And you'll see it made this nice little exponential curve. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the second one on the left hand side all the way down to the bottom and then I'm going to drag this anchor head a little bit more inward, okay? And then I'm going to drag this last playhead just a bit more outward to the right and I'm just gonna go ahead and mess around with these keyframes and then I'm just going to go ahead and drag this right anchor head a little bit more to the right now if you don't understand what I'm doing basically what I did was I just used an exponential graph curve to explain to After Effects how much I want the optics effect compensation to play out. So as you can see, it starts off very slow going up the curve and then it increases really, really high at this point, And then it's gonna slow down a little bit more. And if we play it out, you can see just that just happens right there. And it helps just make the effect feel a little bit more natural and friendly to the eye. Now, what I love about this is that you can really make the graph just exactly to how you like it. Don't copy it exactly to how my mind's is. The way that you change and adjust the fluidity of effects is totally up to you. And that's really at the end of the the day what makes the effects yours. Now that we're done with keyframing the graph, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click the graph editor once again to exit out of it. And now we're gonna move on to our second effect. Come back over here to effects and presets and search up glow. Now we're gonna take the glow under stylize. You should see it there. And then we're going to apply it just to our bottom layer once again. Now you're gonna see everything just really went crazy again. The first thing that we're gonna do is drag your playhead to the very beginning, of course, and keyframe the glow intensity. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna change it from one all the way to zero because everything just looks very ugly. If you click off, you can see we just turn the glow amount all the way to zero. And then once your optics effect kicks in, what we're gonna do is we're going to increase the glow intensity all the way up. And I might increase the threshold as well. The threshold just basically explains how much of the scene I want glowing. And now what really ties it in is the radius. I'm going to increase the radius all the way up to around like 100, almost 200. And you don't want to keyframe the threshold or glow radius, only the intensity. This just helps make the glow actually glow and, and make it feel like a real effect. Now, if you play this out, you can see the scene starts to glow up and then all of a sudden, boom, optics compensation effect. If you want the glow to start a little bit more closer with your optics compensation, you can obviously hit the drop down on the glow right here and you'll see this glow keyframe. Right here, this one at the very beginning is the zero glow keyframe. And now I'm just gonna drag it a little bit farther out. And when you play it back, you can see our glow starts to play out right when our compensation effect starts to happen. And now finally, for the last effect, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search up in the effects and presets one last time, hue, hue sat slash saturation. And I'm gonna drag this all the way over here to our bottom clip once again. Now pay very close, now, now pay attention once again, I'm going to, I'm gonna take my key, 
I'm gonna take my playhead and drag it just a little bit towards the start of where the optics composition starts to play in. I'm gonna start it right here where my glow starts. And then I'm going to hit the keyframe on the channel range, okay? Keyframe on channel range. And then I'm going to increase it. I'm just gonna go all the way to the entire end of my clip. And now what I'm gonna do is you see this little knob right here. You can actually adjust the, the hue and I'm just gonna spin it around like a couple times, maybe three spins, depending on how long your clip is. And you can see the color is just totally shifted all around my, my rotoscoping. And basically what that did was it just made everything kind of rainbowish and it just played and adjusted the hue as the clip went on. And voila, now you can see we have this crazy glowing optics compensation effect and it just looks insane and is really just a great way to spice up your videos. Hope you guys were able to learn something today and here is the final effect. If you guys made the end of the tutorial, thanks again so much for watching. Please be sure to like the video and subscribe with notification bell on if you haven't already. If you like this video or had any feedback, please be sure to leave a comment down below. I love to hear what you guys have to say. Also be sure to add us at Instagram at 11%prod. We love to see what you guys make. Once again, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.